Hi, welcome to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine, and I hope you're ready to improve your English this year. I have lots of information and resources to help you. First, I want to recommend a great podcast, The Huberman Lab by Andrew Huberman. He's a doctor and scientist that explains basically everything, including uh, how we learn. And he explains the science behind it, and he gives practical tips and guidelines to help. So he says um, that learning needs a physical aspect to it, meaning it's way better to, for example, take notes with pencil and paper than taking notes typing on your computer. So with that said, a great resource that you may have available if you're a student, that you should have if you're a student, is a library. So you might have a library uh, at school, in your university, or even a public library if you don't go to school. And you must have one nearby if you don't look for one. We already went to a library, but that was more about English. Today, I'm going to show you a different library. The library doesn't have to be specialized in English, but it will always have some content in English. But let's face it, you don't need a hundred books to practice. So today, I'm going to show you an example. Here in Lima, there is a library, the library of my faculty of veterinary medicine. And the librarian, El Señor Vicente, was kind enough to show me the books that they have available in English. So at any library, even this library that is a specialized library has a lot of variety, which is another great thing about libraries. You can find books about any subject. In this case, they are veterinary medicine, but I'll show you the variety there is. We're going to start with the dictionaries. There's also another video about dictionaries, but here, for example, there are dictionaries with English, Spanish content, but also only English dictionaries, dictionaries about agricultural science, health and biomedical sciences. Then veterinary medicine. Lots of books about veterinary medicine, uh, guides, uh, the Merck veterinary manual, and other manuals that are also for technicians. Talking about veterinary medicine, there are books about diagnosis, lots of books about internal medicine by different authors, but this is general books. We have general books about pain management, about therapy, oncology, but we also have books that are about specific species or groups of species, for example, books about large animals, which means, you know, cows and horses, they are in the category of large animals. So we have books about those species and books about equine medicine, for example, that is for horses. And we even have a book about alpacas in English, which is so interesting. And then, of course, everything is about dogs, you know, probably the most popular animal. So the interesting thing about these books about dogs is not that they are for veterinarians. <laughs> there are books about all kinds of topics, including dog breeds or even stories about dogs. But of course, uh, for owners, uh, to check medicine for owners or not, I mean, there's lots of books about dogs. No, I haven't forgotten about cats. There are books about cats too. For example, this book about cat diseases. And then there's lots of books about dogs and cats because they are usually together. Uh, they come to practice often. And so, for example, this book about x-rays, this book about surgery for dogs and cats, this book about nutrition, uh, urology, neurology, and books that I label small animals, which is basically dogs and cats. But there are other animals as well. We have um, birds, books about poultry. Poultry is basically birds that are for production, like chickens, hens, ducks, turkeys. So there are books about avian medicine, poultry, about production, 
And then about birds in general, wildlife, there's a book about cervids, there is a book about tropical diseases, there are diseases that come from wildlife, there are books about buffaloes, there are a couple of books about the water buffalo, I think that's very interesting. There's a nice book about the evolution of domestic animals, and then we have very more specific books about veterinary medicine topics. For example, uh, veterinary physiology, veterinary nutrition, veterinary microbiology, veterinary mycology. There are lots of books about parasitology in different species, uh, about different kinds of parasites as well. And there are also lots of books about pathology a very important topic for us, a very important subject for us. And finally, there are not just books, there are also journals. So the journals are a series of magazines that is scientific literature. And we have journal, a journal of dermatology, a journal of avian diseases, a journal, a couple of journals about poultry, a journal about comparative medicine. We have Nature, which is a great journal, and veterinary economics. So go ahead, find a book at the library and enjoy the traditional way of learning. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.